So this would look something to, to be sort of technical, right? And hopefully this makes sense. Uh, it's the only way I know how to really draw it. On a timeline, I'm running out of ink here. I need to get new markers. On a timeline, on a timeline, you have a uh, event here, and then we have, so this is past, present. Uh, and we're talking about the same phenomena, Z. I experienced that phenomena Z in the past. I experienced that phenomena Z um, a few months ago. Let's say that's today, a few months ago. When I experienced that phenomena Z in the past, my account of that experience was A. My account of that experience now is not A, it could be B, it could be something else. Either I'm refuting what I initially claimed, or I'm just claiming something different. Right? There is something that happened. There's significance in this. Right? There's significance in that, right? Because what you're telling me is that you, the individual, at one point in your life and at another point in your life, experienced the same thing, but your interpretation, this would be the interpretation, your interpretation of the same phenomena has changed. You've denied your, inter your previous interpretation, right? You've denied your previous interpretation. Or, if you don't deny it, you just say, well, no, it's a little bit more like this. It's something totally different, right? Well, that's significant. That's significant. And what the researcher wants to do is to account for why is it that things change. First thing that comes to my mind, and what I think would be great phenomenological research, I would love to see people do more of it, is um, sort of interviewing a community of former gangbangers, right? When you were a young 15-year-old gangbanger, what was it like? Oh, man, I loved it. You know, I had power. I had money. I had the girls. I had my homeboys. I was, I was the man. 30 years old with two kids. What was your account as a gangbanger when you were younger? Damn, you know, I, you know, I thought it was all cool, but then I realized after I buried all my homeboys and after this and this and blah, 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 blah right? Same experience, two different times in their life, two different explanations, right? That, her, that, that sort of hermeneutic phenomenology is great. And the more people that you can get to sort of substantiate this transition in their experience, this reinterpretation of that experience, lends a clear explanation of whatever that phenomena is. Maybe that phenomena seems glitzy and glamorous, but in reality it isn't. And you can justify that claim that it really isn't as glitzy and glamorous because you have an end of 400 people who have all said, I thought it was glitzy and then I found out it was really bad. Right? Then you take that research to the public and you say, hey, guess what? You think it's really glitzy, you think it's really glamorous, here's 400 hardcore dudes who, who've been on the path that you're thinking about going through, you might not want to do it, right? That's, that's, that's what we do for a living. That's what we try to make the world a better place. All right, so that's uh, hermeneutic uh, phenomenology. Hopefully you have a, a grasp of the, the examples. The reason why I give the examples is because without the examples, none of this really makes any sense anyway. Um, next, uh, transcendental or psychological phenomenology. T R A N S C E N T E N T A L or psychological. Alright, so transcendental or psychological phenomenology. Um, transcendental refers to quote uh, um, quote and I have the citation information on, on, on here if you want to see the citation information. Quote, everything is perceived freshly as if for the first time. Right? Um, I am going to, as a researcher, remove my bias and hear the account from the participant as if it were the case that I never heard this information before. The participant is going to tell the, the narrative and that narrative is going to be experienced as if it were novel. The importance of this is that I have um, as best as possible, an objective account of the experience, right? Doesn't have to, I don't want to get a, a jump the gun, but I can make a, a very uh, discriminating account of the experience. The focus shifts from researcher interpretation to participant description, right? Rather than me as the researcher, researcher participant, rather than me as the researcher, getting information from the participant, attempting to interpret what the participant is saying, and sort of like validating.
which is which is a, which is definitely a process. There's nothing wrong with this. This is one form, right? Participant discloses uh, information. I interpret that information, and then I validate that my interpretation by saying, "So what you meant was ba 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 ba." When you said that you um, you didn't like this situation, the reason that you didn't like it was because da 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 da. We wait for validation from the participant. Exactly. That's that's exactly what I meant. Okay, my interpretation is right. That's one form. In transcendental or psychological phenomenological accounts, it's not like that at all. You have the participant. You have the researcher. N neither one's better or worse. Um, and rather than trying to go through this interpretive account, it's just descriptive, 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 right? Participant, uh, where's, where's the, uh, the focus shifts from researcher interpretation to participant description. The participant is describing the situation. Um, I, I sort of, I, I did a little bit of both, but there's some things where I just couldn't interpret, right? I can't make sense of some of the things. It depends on the type. For example, if you're a man um, and you're interviewing uh, a woman, woman's experience in childbirth, some aspect of it, midwifery or whatever it might be, um, you'll be able to interpret to a point, um, but you might not fully get it. And it, it's okay if you don't fully get it, right? You're not really supposed to fully get it. So you might not want to do an interpretive account. So she might be giving you a description of the pain. And the worst thing you can do as a man is be like, oh, so it was sort of like, you know, when you break your arm. Like, oh, no, it was more like when you, when you had really, really bad uh, indigestion. Uh, you know, you don't want to do that, right? Um, based on whatever the condition is, it might not be conducive to interpretation, right? So what you would do, oh, and I'll give you a more sort of, I'll give you a, a really solid account. Uh, I remember reading research in, in the past um, about parents who lost young children. And if you're, if you're a parent and you have your children, the worst thing you can do is try to interpret the loss of someone else's kid. Right? You don't want to do that as a researcher at all. You know, so that, like the loss of your kid, I can imagine how that must feel. It sounds like the right thing to say, but don't say it, right? That's not, just let the person describe the account, right? Now is definitely not the time to be doing interpretation. If you've lost your child, and I, this is like such a heavy topic, it's a, you know, I don't even like talking about it, but if you've lost your child and that person has also lost their child, then you can really do an interpret. I totally understand, you know, dot, 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 dot. If you haven't lost your child and you're interviewing parents who have lost their child, you definitely don't want to do, you don't want to do this. You want to do this, right? Just have the person describe their account, describe their account, you document the account, and you move on. Um, obviously, it's going to be loaded with, with um, empathic possibilities for you to um, sort of, you know, guide your research, but you don't want to get into an interpretation. You don't want to make any comparisons because it's just, it's, it's not good, it's, it's uh, tasteless. Okay, so uh, this is a shift from research or interpretation to just a description of the uh, events by the, um, by the participant.